Hey, my name is Aaron, I'm 24 years old and I want to make trade obsolete. I want to make what? Let me explain it to you. So, basically I grew up in a small village in the south of Germany. The village has like 7 or 800 people, something like that. And it is located close to the lake of Constance. Then I went to the kindergarten like everybody else, went to school and in 2015 I finished my Abitur. But in school already I was thinking like why am I forced to go to school? I don't like it, it doesn't make fun, I just don't enjoy it. And I was also thinking about the world, like why do we have so many problems? Why are people struggling to survive because they don't have enough food? Yet we throw away one third of the food that we produce. And also like why are people so poor and others so rich? So it's like something must be completely wrong in this world. I didn't want to let go of those questions and I decided to go out into the world to see how it really is and to basically also learn more about the world. So in 2015 I decided to go to Australia with a friend to do a walk and travel and we traveled a lot, we experienced many things and we also enjoyed life of course, like after school and so on. But after half a year we split apart and I continued to travel on my own but I had to work because I had no money. So I worked in a national park as a waiter for like five months and then I said to myself, okay Aaron, let's do something else. Let's try something new. So I decided to do woofing and woofing is basically if you go to a farm and you work there for three, four or five hours per day and you get food and accommodation in return for that. And that was pretty cool because I met the most amazing people that are out there. They were super friendly and super nice and I decided to basically travel only by woofing. So I was woofing from one place to another. I was then in Indonesia, Malaysia, Thailand and Nepal, but of course I was also doing a little bit of sightseeing and I also was hiking in Nepal because this is something you really have to do if you're in Nepal. But remember those questions that I had when I was at school? I didn't let go of those and basically I had economics when I was at school as a subject and I even went into my abitur in economics. But when I was traveling, I was questioning what I've learned there. Because you know, every company has to be kind of profit oriented, like it's just about maximizing its profits. And I was just thinking that is not sustainable in the long run because we are destroying our planet, we have a huge inequality, so this is anything but sustainable. And at that time I was really into permaculture because permaculture is about taking design patterns, design principles that you can observe in nature and put them into practice on like a small scale, on like a small farm or so. So I was really into that and you know, growing your own food, getting back to nature, having this holistic kind of lifestyle. I mean, I was also doing yoga and meditation back then. I was eating a vegan diet and so on. And that was really the things I was into back then. But when I was back in Germany, I was thinking and considering, okay, Aaron, do you want to go into this permaculture direction, like growing your own food and so on? Or what about that other direction, like taking science and technology in order to improve our lives? So I stumbled across the Tron project. So basically I was woofing in Sulawesi, which is an island in Indonesia. And I was building that permaculture garden with a guy from Sweden. And I mean, that was super cool. We had a lot of fun and I also learned a lot from him. And basically he sent me links to different projects and organizations and there was also Tromsa.com. So I thought, okay, I want to look into that. And then I read the book The Money Game and Beyond and I was just completely amazed and fascinated by it. Like my mind was blown because it basically explains that all this mess that we have in today's world that we can see around us with all those problems started like 10,000 years ago when human beings changed from being hunters and gatherers and became farmers basically and settled down because back then they could start to hoard stuff you know property and all those kinds of things came into existence and they also started to trade stuff and this trading thing is basically what we're still doing nowadays yes of course it is useful like if i have shoes and you have milk and then we trade that so that we're both happy and then people came up with shells and then coins and nowadays we have digital currencies, digital money. But it also creates an imbalance of power, like some have more and some have less. Back in those days we had the kings which were super rich and they had like castles and huge pieces of land and so on. 
and then the other ones were super poor and they had to struggle to survive and work every day. And this is nothing else than nowadays because the kings from the past are now Jeff Bezos and Bill Gates and Mark Zuckerberg and all those rich billionaires. And then we have the other ones like the majority of people who is super poor and they struggle to survive. If you think about it, it's just like in Monopoly. Like if you play Monopoly with your friends, then you also trade all the time. You buy properties and then you build houses and hotels and the other ones have to pay if they land on it. And then we also got a huge inequality because basically in the end there will be one winner and the other ones are super poor and they struggle to survive. They have to pay if they land on those properties. And it's just a stupid game if you think about it. Okay, then the question is, can we make this game fair in one way or another? And then people come up with different rules and laws, but the problem is that those rules and laws are not dealing with the issue, with the core problem, which is trade. Because let's say I'm in Africa and I have a family that I have to take care of, but then I lost my job. And then the only way for me to get money is by killing an elephant, selling the ivory to other people, then that's what I'm gonna do, because I have no other choice, right? And then we have also mafias in the world who don't give a shit about any kind of laws. There are terrorists who don't care about laws. There are day by day people laundering money in Germany, like billions of euros. And this is also not allowed, but people do it anyways. And you know also those big companies that don't pay taxes because they say they have their headquarters in like Panama or other countries where they don't have to pay taxes. So you see, it's just there's no way of making this game fair because people will always find ways to hijack those. Okay, so when trade is the core problem and we need to make it obsolete, how can we do that? And you know, there are already many people and organizations working into this direction and the best example is just Wikipedia, because Wikipedia offers education, basically that encyclopedia, and they don't ask for anything from you. They don't want your attention, they don't want your currency, they don't want your data, they just offer it as trade free. And of course they rely on donations, but you don't have to give them money, you don't have to donate them. Another great example are Doctors Without Borders because they also go into different tribes, different countries just to help people regardless of their skin color, age, gender, religion, political affiliations or any things like that. They just treat people who need help and this is just great what they are doing. Other trade-free goods and services are around GNU Linux because there are many organizations and groups which offer something as straight free like an operating system for example or also an app like a program that you can use on your computer and we also came up with the trade free directory so basically this is a directory where we collect all those amazing trade free goods and services and people can submit new trade free goods and services and can also review existing trade free goods and services because maybe there are some amazing humanitarian organizations out there but they have some trackers on their website, so you can also rate them and say they are not 100% trade free. And we also came up with the trade free operating system. So basically we took Manjaro, which is a Linux operating system, and we removed the trade based packages. So the packages that want something from you, maybe your data, maybe your attention or money, maybe they have some premium features or any other bullshit. And we just removed that entirely and only install trade-free applications. And we also recommend only trade-free packages, so packages that don't want anything from you. So what can I, as a single individual human being, do? Well, you can explain to people that trade is the origin of most problems, because many people don't recognize it as a problem or don't consider it as a problem. And then you can also create trade-free goods and services or join an organization who like offers something as trade-free. But I also know that we won't have a trade-free world tomorrow, not the day after tomorrow or even in 20 years, in 30 years, in 50 years or so. But it's just a journey, a process and the challenge for humanity in the 21st century. Because if we don't make trade obsolete and still continue to play this ridiculous game of trade, then we won't be able to solve our problems that we have. 
I know it's tricky because everybody needs to survive. I mean, I also have a part-time job kind of. I'm working in a warehouse and I have to unwrap stuff, unpacking it and then put it into a box. And that's what I do for like six, seven or eight hours. And it's also just completely ridiculous if you consider all the technology that we have nowadays. It just doesn't make sense, but I'm also, I kind of have to do it. But I just try to volunteer as much as possible and yeah, educate people about trade as a problem. And yeah, I'm curious to see where this path will lead me towards to, because you know, it's a never ending journey. Like we won't have a trade free world in 50 years or so, but it's just about recognizing the problem, focusing on the problem and then solutions will emerge. And the more people who work on trade as the origin of most problems, then the better it is for us all. Because the more access we have for trade free goods and services, then the less likely it is for us to create problems. Because if you have access to everything what you need and want, then you um, won't be pushed to kind of like put profit above everything else and so on. So yeah, I can just say to you, do your own thing, go your own way and don't listen to society because our society is fucked up. You can follow me on Friendica, which is a trade-free social network and you can also watch my videos on Peertube instead of YouTube because YouTube is not trade-free, they want something from you, they want your attention because they put ads in front of every video and they also want your data and so on. But Peertube is straight free, they don't want anything from you, so you can watch them there. So yeah, that was it from here. I'm just gonna say, see you in the next video. Take care and much love.